1980, you win your first gold glove. So you've gone from second in the Rookie of the Year voting, first gold glove. Now, there's a goal that you set out when you first started, and you've reached it within yeah. two years. Yeah, it feels pretty good, and boy, I'd, I'd like to do this again. Yeah. yeah. And it's contract time with the San Diego Padres during these years now. And the general manager of the Padres, as you're looking for a new deal, the offer is for 60 grand. And his quote is, and this is paraphrasing, and the, the essence of it was, it's a lot of money for a black boy from Watts to turn down. That was a quote, yeah. That was it. I mean, it all comes full circle. You know, um, it's, it's one of those things that's always there. I don't know how he looked at it, but that was, that's where we were at the time. Here's what you did. You and your agent, I think more your agent, agent. put an ad in the San Diego Union Tribune in the classified section that said, professional athlete, willing to work, uh, looking for a part-time job. It has to fit around baseball hours. Yeah. Yeah. But we'll leave, we, we'll leave baseball for the right price, Wait, the no, right no, opportunity. No, I, want tell you, I want to tell you what he did. He, he, he put in there that, uh, that I was going to go and, and run the tour, uh, dry, uh, ride the Tour de France. <laughs> I didn't know what the hell the Tour de France was. <laughs> <laughs> But this was, the, this was the negotiation and stuff that was going on. But this became, this was an unusually public negotiation. First, the GM says what he says, which hits well, you well, hard. Let me say that it was it's Mrs. Croc, uh, Joan Croc. Owner of the team. team. At the time, actually says that she would go and talk to her head gardener and ask him if he had some opening. He you said he'd work for, for $3.50 for $3 an, an hour. hour. Something like that, yeah. And so... Man, did uh, things go south quick. Well, with the organization, it did. But I did not allow that to deter me from what my goal was. So I kept my head up. I kept moving forward. You and, signed uh, a one-year... I signed a one-year deal. $300,000 deal. deal. Yeah. Five times. Mm -hmm. With, with, importantly, a no-trade clause. In which there. is which, which not many three or four year players get w was this because that gives you a bit of a hammer there i thought it, i thought it did joe i yeah. thought it did until one day i got a call from a reporter in st louis saying welcome to st louis i go i got a no trade clause how, how, they haven't traded me but it happened so you have to be convinced by whitey herzog who had just taken over as manager uh, the year before, you have to be convinced that this is the right move for Ozzie Smith. I am dying to ask you, <laughs> what did he tell you? Because the Cardinals had not been good for a while now. They, everybody thinks the Cardinals, they were always this great team. They hadn't been. Whitey was creating a whole new way to play. Yep. And what did he tell you? Well, when we sat down there, he says, I am willing, if you come and play for the St. Louis Cardinals, he said, there's no reason that we can't win at all. He said, I think that you're the missing piece to this puzzle. He says, I'm willing to give you a one-year deal at $450,000. If at the end of the year you don't like St. Louis, you can become a free agent. And, and if you like it, then we'll sit down and talk about a long-term deal. And the man was the man of his word. And I, and I signed the deal.